I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Welcome to episode 11 of Ask Dave. I'm here to answer your questions about amateur radio, particularly for those new to the hobby. Today's questions all concern antennas. First, viewer Vance Myers asks about supporting coax for antennas. Here's a common setup where coax must be strung vertically. Now, coax is perfectly capable of supporting its own weight when hung to reasonable heights. The question is how to hold it up without putting strain on the connectors or damaging the coax. These connectors are not designed to support the weight of the coax. I've seen numerous articles on dipole construction that suggest wrapping the coax around the center insulator and tying it down. That's great and will work for a while, maybe even months or a few years. But in general, you don't want to bend coax too much. The reason is that the center conductor can migrate from the stress until it contacts the outer shield and shorts out. In general, there are two types of coax dielectric. The old kind is a solid plastic as seen here in this sample of RG58. The center conductor in these will migrate slowly. Many newer coax types have a foam dielectric such as this RG8X equivalent. These allow the center conductor to migrate more quickly. Now, are there other ways to secure the coax? The method I'm about to show you appeared in the October 2012 issue of QST on page 65. The suggestion by Stanley Lebinsky, K2STN, was printed in the Hints and Kinks column. He suggested a technique called whipping. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to use this coax to illustrate. Let's suppose this end will screw into a connector that's been placed at the center insulator of a dipole. We don't want it to hang by the connector, nor do we want to attach it by any means that can cause the center conductor to migrate. So let's take a piece of rope. This happens to be UV resistant rope from Quicksilver Radio. First, create a loop like this, noting that this end will be tied to the center support. Now, start wrapping the other end back around itself, keeping it snug. When you get to the end, insert the rope through the exposed part of the loop, like this. Now, and this is important, while holding the coiled rope in place, pull on the free end, the end that will be used to hang the coax. Pull tight. Note that this creates a very solid rope tie that spreads the compression along the entire length of the knot and does not create any sort of a bend that might cause issues later. So, simply tie this end of the rope to your center conductor and the coax can support its own weight without pulling on the connectors or creating too small a bend radius. I use this method to tie the coax to the base of my vertical so that tripping over the coax won't yank it loose like it did earlier this year. Our next question comes from Badresh Dahanawala. He has one of the very popular Baofeng radios, but reports that when he gets into his car, the RFI from the car completely swamps the receiver and he can't hear anything. Okay, let's be frank. The Baofeng is an example of getting what you pay for. They're cute and cheap, and I think every ham ought to have at least one, but they're not the best at rejecting interference. So, let's address Badrish's problem directly. The answer lies in the size and location of the antenna. These tiny antennas, often called rubber ducks by hams, are truly lousy antennas. They're very much shorter than a quarter wave. This antenna is four and three quarters inches or 12 centimeters long, whereas a quarter wave antenna is 19 inches or about 48 centimeters long. So it's one quarter the length of a proper vertical antenna. 
Fortunately, there's an easy and inexpensive solution, namely a full-size antenna, often called a mag mount, that is simply placed in the middle of the car's roof with the coax coming in through a window. The powerful magnet in the base of the antenna holds it to the car's roof even at high speeds, and the antenna capacitively couples the coax shield to the car's roof, and the roof serves as the antenna's counterpoise. If you are careful to have everything clean when you attach the antenna, it won't even scratch the paint. These antennas are readily available. MFJ, for example, sells a dual-band VHF slash UHF mag mount antenna for $40. All the major amateur radio retailers have mag mount antennas for sale. Now, we often run into a problem. The antennas usually have a PL259 coax connector attached. That's great when you are connecting to your VHF mobile rig, which likely has a matching SO239 connector, but handhelds usually have different connectors. This older ICOM handheld uses a BNC connector. The antenna twists off very simply. To use this with the mag mount antenna, we use an adapter such as this one. The Baofeng and Osheng radios initially were equipped with reverse SMA connectors. You can get little adapters like this one. You screw them onto the radio and then connect the coax. So can you really go mobile with a 5 watt handheld? The answer is a resounding yes. Using an external antenna like this greatly increases your range over the cute but ineffective rubber duck antenna. It also puts the antenna further away from the RFI created by the car. The result is a far better VHF and UHF experience. Oh, and I should point out that you'll likely upgrade to a mobile rig at some point. That mobile rig can use the same mag mount antenna. Now, I've had some questions from folks making their own HF dipoles, an activity I highly recommend, specifically about what to use as center insulators. The answer is you have lots of options. The center insulator serves to hold the antenna together, connect the coax to the antenna, and, as described a couple minutes ago, hold the coax in the air. You can purchase glazed ceramic insulators such as this one from Quicksilver Radio. If you don't like stripping and soldering your coax to the antenna, you can purchase center insulators that have a connector already on them, though this is an expensive way to go. You could also use a standard SO239 connector, and you can also use common materials for your center insulator. I use electric fence insulators such as these two shown here, both of which I got from Murdoch's, a farm and ranch store where they're really inexpensive. You can make do with things around the home such as a piece of PVC pipe with holes drilled in it. I point out that PVC pipe is often not UV resistance, so it will degrade with time. Here's a simple wood insulator I made just for this video. Although, again, this might be something you'd use for a temporary antenna or for testing a concept. The sunshine will eventually crack the wood. As you can see, you're only limited by your imagination. Oh, and I should point out that whatever you use, make sure it's weather tight enough to keep the water out of your coax. This episode's Colorado photo shows that we have more than mountains and trees. I took this sunset photo from our back deck. That wraps up this episode of Ask Dave. Subscribe via YouTube to get notifications of future videos. There's a fan funding tip jar on my channel page if something in this video proves particularly helpful. Until next time, I'm Dave, KE0OG73.